Today we're going to make a very simple maple wine. Not to be confused with maple mead, which we get asked about all the time. People always say, oh, can I just use maple syrup to make mead? Well, no. No, but you can use maple syrup to make maple wine, which isn't going to taste like mead, but it's going to be maple wine instead. So and you can make maple can syrup do it. with honey to make a maple yeah. mead. Yeah. And that's a different video. Now, here's the thing. Do I really care about names? No, not so much. But if you tell someone that you made mead, they ex the expectation is that it's with honey. And if you made maple wine, the expectation is that it's with maple syrup. So based on that, that's what we're going to do. So what we have here is we're going to use a one gallon fermenter. And people have been asking lately, a uh, few people have asked, why do you always make a one gallon batch? How come you don't make bigger batches? Because can you imagine if I put a five gallon fermenter right here? Notice you wouldn't see me, we'd have to block off half of the studio here. So that's why we don't do it. Um, that That is the real reason. And because we just couldn't possibly drink that much. Between testing and everything else, there would be a lot of brews laying around here. So we don't, no, that's just way too much. Okay, to make this, you're going to want the one gallon fermenter. You're gonna want some water. You're gonna want maple syrup, which I happen to have over here because it's large and it would take up half the screen. You're going to want a cup of black tea. Now, we're just using a plain old Irish breakfast tea. Okay, it's a good quality tea, but it is black tea. People always say, can I use green tea? Can I use herbal tea? Can I use chamomile tea? You can, however, it's not gonna serve the same purpose. This is just for the tannins. So don't get too crazy about it. You don't have to use the fanciest tea you can find. Just a plain old, I mean, Lipton black tea does the job. This was brewed for five minutes. I'm also going to be putting in a quarter teaspoon of lemon juice. More on that in a minute. And we're going to be using a little bit of Fermaid O today. I have 1.5 grams here. That looks like eh, probably half a teaspoon, but you're better off actually measuring this because you want to be pretty precise with it. I'm also going to be using 71B yeast. That's right, the beast is back. And that's what's going in this one. So to get started, we want to get our maple syrup into here. I'm going to use three pounds. So we're going to get out the funnel. As you see the little water droplets coming off, those actually aren't water droplets, they're sanitization droplets because all this has been sanitized in the red bucket of sanitization! She set that up so well, she's been dying to do that. I'm gonna have to move this entire setup because the, mic have, the is microphone right is right here. there. So <laughs> I don't wanna bump it, that would be bad. So once I get all that stuff in there, I'm gonna tear out my scale, which T-A-R-E, not tear, just tear. That zeroes it out. Now I'm at 0, 0.0 ounces and I'm going to get out the maple syrup. And this is where it requires two people, one to watch the funnel so I don't overfill and the other one to watch the scale so that I don't overfill. Yes. Yeah. That. Now this was sent to us by Paul Borda. We thank you again. It's a lot of maple syrup. So that's why we decided let's make another brew with maple syrup. All right. So here we go. Are you ready? I'm ready. Thankfully though, maple syrup pours a lot faster than honey, so it's easier. Remember, three pounds, about 1.6 kilograms. Also, this is a US gallon, so it's 3.785 liters. Get that one a lot. Just wanna make sure nobody messes it up. That's it. Just to show you how exact and precise we are around here, it was two pounds, 15.9 ounces. Why 0.9? Because it stopped at 0.8, and I tried to put another little glug in and it didn't quite go enough but I'm okay with that, close enough. So on top of that, I'm gonna add in our tea because this is hot still. So that way we can uh, rinse out the funnel, you know, like we always do. This is always fun to do because I usually spill it in some way because it just doesn't ever come out neatly. See, I just kind of drizzle it around. Yeah, that never, that's not gonna work at all. Whoa, it's hot. You don't want me to do it? Nope, I got it. But thankfully, maple syrup doesn't stick like honey does, so not as worried. All right, tea in. On top of that, I'm gonna put in the lemon juice. Now let me talk about this for a second. This is something that people ask all the time. Well, what about pH in your mead? Do you ever worry about that? And I normally don't worry about it, and here's why. I know that the proper pH for mead and fermentation in general is somewhere around three to 4.5, somewhere in that range, you're in the safe range for most yeast. Some yeasts are a little bit more particular than others, 
but that's the general safe range. Well, honey itself is like 2.6 to 3.5, depending on the honey. So when you blend that with a little bit of water that's a 7 pH, you're already in the range. So that's why we don't worry about it too much, unless you add a lot of acidic things like citrus, lemons and oranges and limes, all really alter that drastically. That's why a lot of time we'll add that in conditioning phase. However, maple syrup is not in that low pH range. It's actually more like six to 6.5, sometimes even as high as seven, which is very close to neutral. So because of that, I wanted to add a little bit of acid for a couple of reasons. One, to lower that pH to put it back to a fermentation range, and two, it will help protect against infection, bacterial, bad stuff that can get in there, all that kind of thing. I'm not gonna use the big words today because I forgot them all between <laughs> doing the research and coming here. We don't work off of scripts, people, okay? So I just, I have a quarter teaspoon of lemon juice. Believe it or not, just a quarter teaspoon, because an eighth a teaspoon of lemon juice will lower the pH in a gallon of water by about 1.5. So I'm assuming that by doing a quarter, that'll lower it by three points. So from that 6.5 down to about 3.5, which is the perfect range. And even if it's off by just a little bit because of the density of the maple syrup, it's still gonna be lower than 4.5. So we're still good. Every drop is sacred. All right, so that's in there. Now I'm gonna put some water in here. I'm debating on putting the Fermade O in right now, except that I know it's just gonna clump and go everywhere. It's kind of a pain. So I am gonna do it though. Yeah, because if you put it in, whatever sticks, you can mm -hmm. rinse them with this. Well, what I'm gonna do actually is put some water into this bowl with it, mix it up and then pour it. Oh. See, I'm getting smart in my old age. So to mix this up, I'm going to use the whisk of unusually small size. Just made that up. And I just want to break up the clumps because every time I've tried to use Fermato or something like it, it just clumps. And I don't think that you're getting the full effect when that happens. So, you know, I want to give this the best shot I can. Some people will ask, you never use nutrients. How come you use the nutrients? Well, because this one really doesn't have much going for it. Maple syrup is pretty barren as far as nutrients go, kind of like honey. But we're not adding anything that's really going to give it nutrients of any kind. So, you know, I don't want this to stall. And I'm expecting this to be somewhere around a 1.100 or so gravity. So that's like in the 13, 14% alcohol range. That's fairly high. I, I want this to finish out. I don't want it to go dry. Well, I don't want this to stall. This stuff really does not want to break up. And if you think you can just dump it in there and it's just gonna work, no, nope, it never does. It clumps, it sticks to the side, and I don't think you get the full benefit that way. So doing this, I actually, I think I did a pretty good job. Just gonna pour that right in. Yay, no clumps. Awesome. Now for some water. I'm only gonna fill about halfway. If you've seen our show before, you know why. But for those that haven't, I'm gonna tell you. It's because it's easier to mix it when it's only half full. You can get a good aeration going, and aeration is important. Some people have been confused lately. Um, some comments that I'm seeing on the channel have been, so sometimes you say don't add oxygen, other times you say do add oxygen. Okay, here's the rule. You always add oxygen when you're creating a brew. Once you've done this part, don't add any more oxygen along the way. That's the general rule of thumb, okay? There's exceptions, but they're very, very, very specific things, and it's very rare. There aren't a lot of times when you'd want to add oxygen down the road, okay? Let me get the bung. The bung is kept in Einstein. Einstein used to be my favorite mug. And then he got a crack. So I can't drink from it anymore. So now he's useful still. But that bung needs to be washed out in turbos. I'm just going to stick the funnel in the water. We'll need that in a minute. Some people have also asked why we don't have turbos on set. It's simple, because there's not enough room for him. He's around large. Turbos is a 15 pound bucket. bucket. <laughs> So he's right here. Or 15 gallons. Fireside all the time, doing his job. Now, what I'm doing is mixing this one and aerating it. What I mean by aerating, notice the color. See how dark that is? Just watch. I'm going to shake the bejesus out of it. And now look at that color. That's 30 seconds of mixing. That's how much air got put in there. 
It also makes foam. So that is something to watch out for. That's another reason why I only fill it halfway. By filling it halfway though, I have a lot to shake and move around. Now what I'm gonna do is just take that cap off, put it back in, and I'm gonna shake it up some more. Get some fresh oxygen in there. Even though that doesn't really add fresh oxygen, it just lets the pressure out. I have a rule of thumb for mixing honey. I don't really have a rule of thumb for mixing maple syrup. I'm gonna guess it's it's mixed. I don't I don't think I need to mix anymore. Well, you're gonna have to mix it more once you add more yeah, water. Yeah, but I made a lot of foam. I don't wanna make more foam. So we're just gonna rinse off that bung. I'm gonna add more water. Just splash it everywhere. You know it's a brew day when the kitchen's a mess when you're done. It, it's just, that's the truth. And now is when I have to be careful because all that foam could cause problems for me later. There is a sort of a trick to get rid of some of it. Some people you like to put a chopstick in there and do that. I don't like to do that because that could cause an infection if you didn't really clean up your chopstick, especially if they're wooden. So what I like to do is this. It's actually really simple. It's just the swirling method, but it breaks up those bubbles if you do it gently. See, they coat the sides a little bit, but they actually do break up. You have to do it for a few minutes. Is it the most dramatic difference in the world? No, but it does help a little bit. Every quarter inch of bubbles I take out is probably like a half cup of meat of maple wine. So it's, it's, it's a big deal. Okay, it did something, not a lot. Sometimes it does more than others. The foam will die down over time. I'm just gonna add more water. Actually, before I go too much further, because I don't want these to stick to the side either, um, I'm gonna add the yeast. Now, you, what? We normally do a reading before adding the yeast. Yeah, and this comes up all the time. People say, oh, you should do the reading before you add the yeast. And my question is why? The yeast is not gonna do anything in the first two minutes. I know what she's saying and I know why she's asking it because we normally do. But my opinion, and I could be completely wrong, is that it doesn't actually make a difference. I think that comes from the old days when people might have made up something, let it sit overnight to settle or whatever, and then they pitched yeast the next day. That's why they did it. Or it's the idea that you don't want to take a reading after you've pitched because they might have waited a day to take a reading. If you do that, well, then it's not accurate. Yeah. But I'm going to take it like in not even five minutes. I don't think they're gonna make a significant amount of alcohol in that time to change it. Also, whack your yeast packets. There's extra things in there. There's still stuff coming out. It's still coming out. Hear that, feel that grit? You can hear it. That's yeast. You paid for that. Get it out, make, put them to work. All right, but now I have yeast all over the inside of my funnel. So I'm gonna use some more water and clean it out. All right. It's at this point that I question just how greedy I want to be. I'm seeing the foam. Don't fear the foam, by the way. Don't be afraid of that. Um, and I'm wondering how much I can push this. It's already just barely breaking the shoulder. I'm gonna go just a little bit more. Being daring here. You know, I mean, that's a mouthful, right? That's a mouthful. That's a mouthful. Oh, look at how many mouthfuls of wine I'm putting in here that we wouldn't have had. I think that's about as far as I can go. I'm probably getting the look from Derica anyway. So we'll just take that guy out of there and set it aside. And now we're gonna take our reading. And I can't see that the yeast is going to change that reading at all, okay? They're, not only are they not gonna make alcohol, Actually, I don't think they're gonna change the density. No, you need to mix it because you added more water. Yes, you are absolutely right. And she's saying that because there's a distinctive line right here where you can see that it's settled out a bit. So I'm going to mix this up. Now I'm going to, I'm not going to mix as vigorously as I did before because I don't want to make more foam. So instead I'm just going to kind of do like this, get the whole thing moving. The tornado effect. Mm -hmm. Or because this is water, it would be cyclone, right? Whirlpool. Yeah. That, one of those things. But you can see how it changed the color even still, you know, there's still plenty of oxygen in there. And the foam line is going down. See, this method works. Okay, it is mixed up really, really well. Now I'm actually gonna add more water because 
I can. And then we'll mix again. Oh, that's right. In the funnel, folks. Bad things happen. Don't ask me why I know. See, now I can get really greedy. That's like a whole glass of wine there that, that I got to add. Okay, now we're done. That's it. That's it. Just walk away. But now I got to do the swirly mixy thing again. The last mix isn't so much necessary for the wine itself as it's necessary to get an accurate reading. And it's good to have an accurate reading or as accurate as you can get using home equipment because that way you kind of know what you're getting and it's repeatable. You can next time go, okay, well, I know that I got this number. So next time, well, it was, you know, it's a natural product still, maple syrup. So maybe you needed to add another ounce or a few grams or whatever to meet that same gravity line. So, you know, go from, go from there. Now we're going to use the super sucker, formerly known as the Todd. It's just a, a big syringe, 100 mil syringe. And I'm just giving this a good spin to release all the bubbles from the side. Okay, so this looks to be 1.088 gravity, which is fine. Let me just make a note of that. That's gonna come out to somewhere in like the, I don't know, 10 to 11% range. 71B is gonna work through that, no problem. We may end up back sweetening or back flavoring, which I heard with maple wine, you tend to do that anyway, so I'm kind of expecting to. And then we'll probably end up pasteurizing or something to keep it from re-fermenting, and we'll have a lovely, nicely sweetened maple wine. Now, I had heard that maple syrup varies drastically in its gravity, and apparently that's true, because a lot of people were using three pounds and getting like 1.100, 1.110, I'm off by about 22 points from that highest one. So yeah, there's a little bit of variance there, but not all that much. I also know that the one gallon line is somewhere down here. So I filled this up a little bit over a gallon. That's enough to dilute it at 10 or 12 points. By the way, if you hear what sounds like rain in the background, it's because it's raining here like crazy. Yeah. Um, it's been like that all day, which is very unusual. We don't normally get rain all day, but I think it's because of Ida. I believe so. Yeah, there's a hurricane ripping through the Gulf. Um, anyway, so this is an airlock and a bung. I'm just going to put that on there. Affix it firmly, I think would be the correct way to say it. Wait to see if it pops back out. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. It looks like it's That one good. looks like it's in there pretty good. All right. Okay, and I have my very, very fancy note mechanism here, which is masking tape and a piece of paper. <laughs> Basically, you want to make sure that you have the name of your brew. Maple wine. The date that you started the brew. August 1st, 2021. The ingredients you included in your brew. Uh, three pounds of maple syrup, one cup black tea, one quarter teaspoon lemon juice, 71 beet, fermate O, 1.5 grams. And the gravity. 1.088. Now what are we going to do with it? We're going to let it sit. This will probably go, I, I'm going to give this a few weeks easily. Um, because we did add some nutrient to it, it should, it should take off pretty quickly. I'm hoping to see some activity within the next couple of hours or maybe minutes. You never know. And whenever that happens, we'll make sure to share it with you. So it's been about two hours and there's a slow trickle of bubbles coming through, which means this has started up. This, That's always a good thing. This actually started up rather quickly and yeah. we were just like, did it really start up already? And so we waited to gave see it if it time. would give it more energy, more activity, you know, vivaciousness. And no, it's just slow and steady is winning the race here. It's just trucking right along. It is doing the lava lamp thing, though. It's like, let's, let's show you. Yeah. So here's the airlock. You can see that not only is it bubbling, but it's creating the little foamy top that's normally indicative of a, a healthy, active fermentation. And then when we transfer downward... There's some weird-looking foam in there. It's It's got little foam islands going on. Nothing nothing wrong with that. Nope. Just, just I like showing you guys stuff like this because it, it looks weird. So some people might be worried that that's a bad thing. It's not at all. It's just the way the foam is scattering and breaking down. Not a problem at all. 
And then into the must itself, we can see that the yeasts are kind of doing the lava lamp thing where they're floating up and then floating back down. Now, those are clumps of yeast, just so you guys down. are aware. Yeast are microscopic, so you yeah. can't see individual ones. Yeah. But they're just like the clumps of them that haven't broken up yet. Maybe they caught on to a little bit of fermato or something that wasn't totally broken up. And that's what you're seeing there. All that is perfectly normal. And if you have that, then you have something similar to us. If you don't have that, that doesn't mean you have something bad. So right. don't freak out. It can take out. up to three days to get to this point. So don't don't freak out. If after three or four days, you still don't have any activity, you don't see any bubbles, um, look for bubbles on the side if you don't see any activity. Because a lot of people are using buckets and buckets don't necessarily have the best seal all the time. So a lot of time, that's what it really is. is it started up, but your bucket doesn't have a good seal. So the airlock isn't showing any activity. If it happens in a container like this, make sure that your bung is properly inserted. We had that happen, somebody in the VIP just the other day, yeah. um, that it just wasn't wasn't sealed up. They, they couldn't tell and it wasn't showing any activity. So they were, they were concerned. If you don't see any activity there though, look inside, see if there's anything going on, any movement. That's usually gonna be your best sign that something's happening. If you don't see any, pitch more yeast. Yeast die. It's just a simple fact of life. It's, it, it happens. They get old if you don't store them properly or if you store them for a really long time. More and more of the colony is dead within that packet and sometimes you just don't get a viable colony out of it. It's okay. See those people on the side? That's our bejesus and plaid level VIPs. They help support the channel along with our other VIPs so that we can continue sharing this content with you. If you've enjoyed this video, look up. There's another one you might like equally as well. Thanks for watching.